Welcome to my handicap accessible granny flat slash YouTube studio. Come on. This guest house is 800 square feet on the lower floor here, and then I made use of the attic for storage space. I don't know how many square feet that is, but you can add that onto the total square footage. You're looking to make something like this yourself and build it for whatever your needs are. You can kind of get an idea of what 800 square feet would look like. There's a lot of other options on things I could have done differently that you can do differently to keep in mind when you're building something like this. Now let me show you all the details that I had put in here and all the handicap accessible features, which is one of my favorite parts of this house. I had two main goals when building this one was to be able to have a place to work outside of my home I do YouTube full-time and I needed a place to film two was to have a place for someone that I love my grandma in particular to come live with me should she ever not be able to live on her own that is one main reason why I made it handicap accessible so I built this with those two things in mind one of the main features that I wanted to make sure I had put in this house was a handicap accessible countertops to roll under. I had these doors put in that are pocket doors. Now, this was a little bit tricky to find someone that could do this well. <laughs> we, we have some things about it that didn't end up quite, quite exactly like we expected. But if you want to do this on your own and you can't find someone who does pocket doors when you're building it, I would at least suggest doing regular doors, but no cabinet floor on the bottom, just a regular floor so you can roll underneath it because you can always remove the cabinet doors later if that's a need that you have. Because I wanted a stove that you could roll under, I went with this uh, counter stove. I don't know what you call this. It's an electric stove that does not have the oven on the bottom. I went ahead and put the oven in here separate in the under counter so that you would be able to get to this with a wheelchair and then that is separate. So this is perfect. You could roll right underneath here and do some cooking if that's something that you need. I did the same thing with all of the sinks. I wanted to make sure that someone that needed to could roll right under this. Another great option for this, I feel like, is when you're older, it can be hard to stand at a sink or at a stove for a long period of time so even if they're not in a wheelchair this gives them the option to pull up a stool and sit while they're doing things now the sink itself also has a couple of features that you should consider one this is a shallow depth sink made to be handicap accessible so there's more room for someone's knees to roll underneath them also the drain is over in the corner not in the center when doing some research on how to make things handicap accessible or more accessible for older people I found out that something you should consider is knobs not being the knobs that you twist because arthritis can make that more difficult so I found this the uh, Delta faucet online that you can just touch. It also has a lever if they want to use that, but you can just touch it. It pulls out like this, Whoop, got water on the floor. <laughs> This just makes it a lot easier for someone with arthritis to not have to worry about bending their fingers or doing a twisting motion. I try to consider these things when picking out a dishwasher as well. So instead of your typical uh, door dishwasher that folds down and you have to reach all the way to the ground to pick it up, I opted for this drawer dishwasher that you can just pull out and push back in. Now I got the single drawer. It is not a large capacity. For a single person it's great. For a family it might be a bit small. Now they do offer a double drawer if you're doing it for a family, but for a single person and a mother in all sweet this works out perfect same thing for the microwave I opted for a drawer microwave this was more for uh, space saving than it was handicap accessibility because I it's a smaller house and I didn't want to take up counter space with a microwave I didn't really have anywhere else to build it into the cabinets so I opted to put it in the island here another thing you want to consider when making a place handicap accessible is how much room there is for a wheelchair to be able to turn around completely in a circle so you want to put extra room in between your countertops and your island if you choose to go with an island Counter height is another thing to consider. As you can see, I have a drop down here where the stove is. Also, the island is at ADA height. However, I knew I wasn't building this for someone who's already handicapped or in a wheelchair. So I did put some taller countertops here on the sides so that people who are standing can also have a comfortable countertop to use. And this is for space saving purposes, but we did go ahead and put a stackable washer and dryer here in the kitchen. The original plans called for it to be in the closet of the bedroom, but in the original plans the closet took up a lot of the bathroom so I opted for a bigger bathroom and a smaller closet in here which made me look for a place for the washer and dryer we decided this was a great place for a washer and dryer since this is a smaller 
fireplace, I also opted for window seating on either side of the fireplace. I purposely made this big enough where I could put a cushion here and someone could sleep on this as a bed if need be. If you do your measurements right, you can make this to where an RV mattress, a small RV mattress, a bunk mattress can fit on these. You can have that um, covered however you would like to make it decorative, but also it can be functional. I did also see something on a website that was interesting after I'd already done this. Someone did a bench seat with a pull out bed which I thought was super cool. So if you're building something custom for scratch, you might consider that too. I also wanted to do a wood burning stove in case of emergencies. Now I don't live somewhere that is normally cold weather, but if there is cold weather, a lot of us here are not prepared for power outages because no one has wood stoves around here. So I wanted to get that. Now, if you're considering a wood stove and it's not something you're familiar with, I was not aware that you can double the price that you see they're asking for because it's gonna cost as much as the stove for them to do the piping and installation in the top of the chimney. My HVAC guy recommended that we get the EcoB thermostat, which I love. I probably wouldn't have sparged on that myself, but it is a smart thermostat so you can adjust it from your phone. It also tells you the current weather and the humidity. The humidity has been very surprising for me. I did not have or have a way to read humidity in my house and now I know that's part of the reason why it's hot in your house so much. My contractor also told me that if your humi humidity is above a certain percentage, that's when mold starts to grow. And where I live, apparently it's very common for it to be at that percentage. So the more you know. That brings me to the bedroom. Now I wanted this also to have enough room for a wheelchair to get around. I also went ahead and got the mattress that is adjustable, has an adjustable base on it because for elderly people, it's a lot easier for them to get out of bed if you can raise it up and help them get out. Also, this is the only TV I have in the house, so it makes a great place for watching television. And this is a smaller closet I opted for versus what the plans had. The plans had a huge closet big enough to fit a stackable washer and dryer, but I didn't feel like I had a need for that since I had the storage upstairs. So I just put in a small closet that someone could use if someone was ever living here. Now this may look like a normal ceiling to you, but it actually has a little secret. So this house was so small, we couldn't find a good place for stairs. So I actually found a contractor talking about this on a YouTube video. I wish I could remember his name, but the company is called Magic Stairs. People get these for their attic and their garage a lot of times, but since we didn't have a good place for a staircase and I did not want to be climbing up and down a ladder every day to get to my clothes that I use for my YouTube channel, I opted for this. It was a little pricey, but totally worth it. All right, let's head up these stairs and see what it looks like in my closet up here. So welcome to my attic closet here. As you can see, I have rows of clothing on all of the walls because my YouTube channel here, if you're not one of my regular viewers, is an affordable clothing YouTube channel where women shop. So I needed lots and lots of storage for all of my clothes. Also, if you ever have an elderly person living here, if you're building it for a mother-in-law suite like I did, they're gonna come with a lot of stuff because they have a whole lifetime of stuff. So this is, a large room that they can store things that they might not need every day. And when I'm done with it, it goes right back up in the ceiling, completely hidden. I do wanna mention one thing, if this is something you would consider putting in a ceiling of a house. The contractor I watched on YouTube had to leave a little open space right here at the end, I'll show you what I'm talking about, to leave a panel so that it could be pulled down if the electricity ever went out. My contractor did the same, it was kind of, um, a trial and error situation. He ended up doing a big magnet on it, but sadly, a couple months after we finished it, it all fell down and broke in the floor. So he's gonna have to replace that, but I just wanted to show you that in case you decide to install one of these yourself, keep that in mind. You wanna leave a little panel so that you can get access to that in case of an electrical outage. One of my favorite areas of this house is the bathroom. I did go ahead and do the pocket doors in here just like I did in the kitchen, one for the sink and then one for this vanity area so someone could sit here and get ready if they wanted to in the mornings. I also made sure the toilet is a handicap accessible height and I have a grab bar here. Now you might want to consider putting a grab bar on the back as well. I had seen that, I wasn't sure what it was for. And then I found out if you leave enough room here on the side of the toilet, someone in a wheelchair could transfer over from the side of the toilet and use this grab bar to help pull themselves over. Let me tell you something about grab bars. You need to make sure that your contractor knows where your grab bars are gonna go before the drywall goes up because they put wood blocks in here to give this something sturdy to hang on to. Otherwise, this thing's gonna come right out of the wall. So make sure you tell your contractor where exactly you want all your grab bars to go and you do a little bit of research on that before you put them in. This roll-in shower is another absolutely favorite feature of mine. I have always wanted something like this. So before my father died a few years ago, he was in a wheelchair. He could get 
up to go short distances, but for the most part, he was in a wheelchair. It was very hard for him to get around. So I know how hard it was for my mom and dad to not have a handicap accessible bathroom. So that is something I wanted to absolutely make sure and put in this house, and I love it. Again, you want lots of grab bars in this space. Something else to consider is when someone is sitting down in a wheelchair or in a chair, even, some, even if someone's not in a wheelchair, a lot of times it's really hard for elderly people to stand for a long period of time in the shower. So what you can do is get a bar like this from Kohler, no, not Kohler, Delta, this is Delta. Uh, this works as a grab bar, but it also has a movable shower head that can move up or down for however low you want it. I know that was a problem with my grandmother and her shower, so we had to get something more adaptable for her. This also comes off and can be used with the hose. I do have another shower head up here for regular use as well. I also tried to be mindful of the shelving. I have two that are kind of low for someone sitting down, and then two that are higher up for taller people that may be standing for a shower. They were also able to put in this linear drain toward the back of the shower, so don't have to worry about a drain or anything obscuring the middle of the floor for someone rolling in a wheelchair. So that was really nice. Again, with the faucets in the bathroom, you wanna make sure you've got something with a lever or that is touch sensitive so that someone with arthritis can easily turn the water on and off. Cabinet pulls and door levers are also something to consider for people with arthritis. It is ideal to have something they can just slide their hand into and then pull. Same thing with the levers on the doorknob. You don't want a doorknob, you're gonna have to grab and twist. I also have this decent sized cabinet here in the bathroom for more storage. This is where I was able to make a spot big enough to put brooms and vacuums and things like that that every household needs. Otherwise, I wasn't gonna have a spot for that. Something else that was important for me was for if someone was living here full time for them to have their own outdoor space. So I made a little covered porch back here. Don't judge the landscaping because there is none right now and the dirt work's still a little rough. But let me show you that. Okay, I obviously need to clean this a little bit, but this has enough room for a little rocking chair and a bench right here for someone to sit. It is covered and it's got a few trees around it. So there's a little bit more privacy back here than there is in other places in my yard. I also love this custom sign I got from Etsy. I actually stole this idea from a Facebook group that I saw that has old houses had a sign like this. It says all our visitors bring happiness, some by coming and others by going. I thought that was so funny. Two other things I wanted to consider when making this house, because it was so small, but I didn't want it to feel small, I made sure and we had high ceilings and lots and lots of windows. That may not be in everyone's budget, but if you can afford to do that, it makes a tiny space feel so much bigger, so much more open and not claustrophobic. Another option I didn't know about that my contractor suggested were the switches that are timed so you can set your outside lights to go on and off whenever you want. That has been huge because I live over in the other house and I don't want to come out here every night to turn the lights on and I do like to keep outside lights on. I'm sure there are a lot of handicap accessible features that I forgot in this house so if you have any you would like to leave for other people to know about leave it in the comments down below. As far as things I would change or do differently every time someone builds a house they always realize the things they should have done differently. Uh, one thing I would bump that wall out a little bit more because there's not a lot of room for a couch over here and that's my fault for making this island so big. This island's a little bigger than the original plans and then have extra room in between the island uh, for wheelchair accessibility. So that's one thing I would have done. Another thing I would have done that honestly I didn't know was gonna be a thing till after we were completely done. My regular house is on a septic system. So this house was gonna go on the septic system as well. I had no idea until we were done that that required to have an electrical pump to pump from this house to my main septic system. Therefore, if the electricity ever goes out, nothing's gonna be able to go down my drains. I can't flush the toilet. So I definitely, if it was possible, maybe it wasn't, I don't know, I'm not a contractor or a plumber, I would have put it on its own septic system if that was possible. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna look into a solar generator so that we have a backup in the event that the electricity does go out. I had to move my dad into an assisted living apartment the last few months of his life. And one thing I learned is they're incredibly expensive and insurance normally does not pay for it. So in our low cost of living area, it was $2,600 a month for his assisted living apartment, $3,000 the first two months, which he ended up only living there two months. And now that I've learned how expensive it is, and if you have the means, you'd be better off putting that in your own property where you're actually gonna get the money back instead of giving it to an assisted living facility. So if you have the means, this is a better investment in the long term if you think you're gonna be taking care of an elderly adult one day. Another option you could consider if you wanna do a similar floor plan, instead of putting this island here, which I love the 
island. You could rotate this over to make an L-shaped kitchen, which would allow so much more room for a dining table and a couch over here in the living room. And then you wouldn't have to bump out any walls to allow room for those pieces of furniture. So something to keep that in mind, if you're looking at this for a potential floor plan, you can always arrange things to make them more accommodating to your needs. I hope this video helped you guys. If you're looking at building something like this for yourself, or maybe have the need to build this in the future, save it so you can refer back to it and you guys have a great day.